Hey, this is Chris Wu with Hilux Optics. And this is Scott. So today we're going to take a look at some of our PRS footage that from our last competition, and we'll go through some of our training footage and see uh, what worked, what didn't work, and maybe some of our thoughts. This is going to be our after after action review for our first match, and um, yeah, let's get to it. We learned there's a lot to learn. So this is in the very beginning before when we got there, there was an hour period where people could check zero. I think up until this point and with our practice earlier, we were suffering from not enough nerves. <laughs> Once you get up to the gun like that, thoughts fly out of your head and you just want to start hitting. So at this time, we were focusing on practicing the different types of stances just to throw ourselves off of our regular bench or prone game. Mm -hmm. I think we've both gotten a little complacent with the bench shooting. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I guess I'll say right off the bat was the positions they had us shoot from the barricades were way more unstable than the step ladder was. Mm -hmm. So I guess we, we will yeah. need to build a barricade. Um, I saw one that the 6'5 guys made. Maybe we'll, we'll try to recreate that. Um, maybe even build a tank trap. But I, I think the definitely shooting, practicing those positions is the most challenging. Or shooting in those awkward positions is the most challenging part for yeah. me. I think I've got to think of what it was that James was saying. That it's not really how many rounds you get off. It's how many you hit. So he would force himself to slow down and just try and get every single hit. If he only fired half of his shots, I mean, that still would have been more points than I got. Mm -hmm. And so something else that I noticed that was really tricky for me was acquiring the targets. So this is Desert Marksman, and we're used to this range. We know where all the targets are. So finding those targets yeah. during our yeah. course of the fire were pretty easy. Um, we went to to California Tactical. They had all the targets up on the hill at random distances, and they're they're literally labeled by letters like target A, B, whatever through Z. And I thought I thought one of the hardest parts was um, being able to identify those targets under stress. I, I think I had a couple of courses fire where I was shooting at the wrong target. I burned a shot shooting at the wrong target twice. I kind of had a, a cheat code for that side of things. I was the guy who would start off on spotter scope every time, so I got to practice the motions and, and learn the map of the field. Oh, still didn't help me. Still got to do wind. You're doing bipod right now, bag. Yeah. I think one thing I'm noticing when you're getting up to the bag and you're putting your rifle on it, you put it closer to the balancing point, right? Yeah, I try to keep it right around the center um i guess like center of mass so it feels a little bit uh, maybe maybe i'm not sure if that's a benefit or not but it, it feels like i can control the the swing of the rifle a little bit better i i think during the competition i was pulling mine a little farther back and resting it towards the front of the guard mm -hmm. and maybe i was trying to replicate a bipod but just never felt stable mm -hmm. there was no wind yeah, i'm still it trying to figure out what's, what's, what works and what doesn't work <laughs> Try again. So, be getting back to the competition now. We shot the competition out of order. There were what, four squads? There were four squads, six stages. Um, we started on number four, I think. Actually, I think we started on five. We did five, six, and then four. And then we went to two, one. No, three, one, two. Because we went to the hill. Oh, yeah, no, we down. have three. Was it through three? Was it, well, we'll see. Uh, this was number one. Yeah, this is stage one. And so, this we did fourth. So for, the, for this stage, there were uh, there was a 600 yard target target or 670 yard target that we shot on top of the hill. Um, Let me get the book. Yeah, so this was this was one of those interesting ones that like when we got there, we're like, oh man, I did not practice for this. <laughs> I remember before this, we were googling. They sent us the instructions, and we were just trying to look up 
what is a citrus box? Yeah, what is a citrus box? Oh, well, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I, it was literally a box that you put oranges in. <laughs> well, it's standard size, I guess. Mm -hmm. Those walls, they every time you would fire, they would flex a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think they were probably flexing when you had the weight on them too, even though they're pretty thick. Mm -hmm. Let's see, 670. Then once you finish shooting uh, your first five shots outside of the box, you got to hop into the box, reacquire another target. They're about this big at 264 mm -hmm. yards. They're hanging on these black leather swingers or something. I know most of us were just shooting the leather. We never actually hit the metal. <laughs> So it is interesting. I, I, I also realized that uh, we should probably practice on smaller targets, especially at the closer distances. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of the stages, all uh, they, had, they had targets at 200, 300 yards. You'd think those would be the easy, like, gimme points, but they're actually harder to hit. Like, um, I think he told us purposefully that he makes the closer ones smaller so they get shot less often. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they replace them too, too many times. None of us hit those. So we could choose to shoot either the left or the right one. Next time, I, well, I guess like that was part of like the walkthrough on the stage. Um, well, when I did it, I I, I went, I, I saw someone. Um, maybe we can mark this. So. I went on and I used the, the fulcrum or I guess like the connecting point between that. I thought that was a little bit more solid. I was able to get four of the five hits on 600. Um, actually, I, I first shot I took at 600, I shot at the wrong target. But after I got on the right one, I, I hit four in a row on that. And I think I only got the 260 yard target once. And I, 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 I used the, this wall right here instead of using this fulcrum thing right here. I, I should have put my put the bag over here and shot with uh, that that support oh it would have been nice i wish i had started outside the box on the right and laid my rifle across there mm. just put my shoulder up into the wall mm -hmm. yeah i saw james uh he 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 did something smart like he put he put the his bag on on that corner and he shot the right target with his arm up so like that yeah. i i thought either it was james or michael um they they both did uh, a little bit better on that stage than i did now stage two rooftop. Oh, yeah. We never practiced on anything like this. So just right off the bat on this one, I was I was spotting for people. I, I should have taken a look at how people were standing. I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna wing it. Uh, the entire time, I felt super shaky, like my feet were gonna slip off underneath me. I, definitely next time, I, I might try turning my 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 soles on my shoes so that I can get more of my foot onto that support. This this whole stage, I, I felt like I was just the, the crosshairs were moving the entire time. I was literally figure eighting like the target, and I would just try to like pull the trigger, and when my barrel would line up in the right spot. I think I went first on this one, and I had no idea what to do, so I just sort of walked up the steps, put my knee on the board, and went for it. And I think I'm gonna stick with that. I just sat down on my foot and rested on my knee. Oh. I want to build one of these. What do you think you'd do next time? Um, I think I might try some, uh, something that you did, or like you were you were telling me, um, put like my angle my lower lower uh, bottom foot into the into the roof, and then uh, step up with my other foot and try to rest my elbow on, on the, my knee, just to get more Moving bone support. Moving to Gary. Kind of like the Captain Morgan of shooting. Yeah. So let's see. We're on the roof here. There were supposed to be five targets, but one of them got shot out. So instead, we had four targets 352, 414, 455, and 608. Mm -hmm. So this was another tricky one. Uh, there were so many targets that, that uh, out there, and it was really, really hard to find these targets. So for me, I spent probably like a good quarter of the, the allotted time just trying to find my target. I, I remember losing the target after shooting X, the first one, I lost it. And I was just like trying to, I was, you see me fiddling around with my um, magnification, just trying to identify the targets and get in on it. I remember these were some of the targets we had used for other matches by this point. 
So I knew look for the green, go up to the dry grass patch, go left for the second target, and I just kind of, I don't know, it was a weird map, but it worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so stage three was, um, there are three shooting positions. The first one, you shoot off this little, uh, off the window, so they're all marked by the green. So you shoot off the, the ridge of the window, uh, and then you move to the side. Uh, I guess this little uh, sawhorse sort of saw thing. Horse kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then the third one, you got to put your side into the hill and shoot off of the corner of a stove, an old wooden stove or something. Something like that. It, it was a, a tricky position, too. I th This one, um, the hmm. I think whenever I'm going to use a bag, a stage I'm going to use a bag on, I'm going to take the bipod off. Mm -hmm. Is that just, I don't know. Feels clumpy. Oh right, I ejected a bullet, and I kept trying to feed it back in, but then yeah. I would feel the time pressure and give up. Oh. I think I did the same. I uh, I thought there was four shots in the first one, but um, yeah, I, so I I unintentionally uh, racked the bolt and popped out a bullet, and I just had to put it in my pocket. The good thing about these courses is most of them were built so that you could use the California compliant magazines and still have enough bullets. But I think if I was doing the slow and steady method, I'd probably only shoot four or five rounds, four or five bullets per round, I guess. This guy on the, the shot timer, James, is so funny. He shot the entire <laughs> match with a cigar in his mouth. <laughs> he shot quite well too. <laughs> and he never moved quickly. Yeah, there you see Puffin on the cigar. <laughs> There's that extra bullet. Got to use it. One of the things was we had to lock the bolt back whenever we were moving the gun to a new position. Mm -hmm. And for Chris's style of bolt gun, that's probably a lot easier. I have to practice a little thumb tap. No, a little bit. So yeah, this one was an interesting stage. So we had to shoot through the slot. Um, one of one of the swinger targets broke, so we just did. Uh, we just had three shots on uh, through the first slot, three shots through the second slot. Um, the targets probably were about at ha one and a half MOA down to one MOA. Pretty small targets. The smallest one was probably two inches at 200 yards. Um, so we started off with the pistol, two shots on the silhouette around 25 yards away, and then move to the, the rifle, shoot three through the first slot, three through the second slot, make safe, and then go back, finish up two on the silhouette. You can see on the slots there, more towards the right of each one, there's a little bullet blast. If you hit the wooden slit, like if you actually shot it, you're done. You're just done. So everyone was trying to set up their rifles and get them in position, but oh, that slot was so narrow. I think the M1000 at these distances was fine. Mm -hmm. I was contemplating switching to the M1200, but with that much magnification, I probably wouldn't have been able to find the targets. Yeah, I definitely found that you'd have to, working the magnification ring was like something I had to do practice, like especially under like stress or a time limit. I just left mine on 10. Hmm. How much is that? It's because you're coming off the gun to run that Yeah, I need to work on recoil management too. So my uh, my Remington 700 doesn't have a muzzle brake. So every time I shoot, the barrel jumps a lot, and I found myself like losing the target a couple times. So I, I had to like back down on magnification or shoot at like I was I think I was at seven or eight power for most of the match. I think I need to do what was it Jonathan was telling me. Mm -hmm. I got to get in line with the rifle more. It seemed to sort of lay like at a 45 for most of the shots. 
There we're shooting through to the 200. And you go largest to smallest, so three shots, big, medium, small. Move to the next, big, medium, small. Then back to the pistol. I was so used to having to rack it after every shot. I just went ahead with this pistol. I racked the bullet out and ran out of time. So this is actually the first um, first uh, course of fire that we shot, first stage. And uh, I, I'm not gonna lie, I had some nerves. And one thing that I learned real quick on this stage was to keep my eye looking, to, um, keep a sight picture while racking the bolt. Um, you'll notice after the first couple shots, I take my head off out of the sight picture. And then when I got back on, I had to reacquire the target. And I, I don't think I was able to even get all the shots off on this one. Another thing was so. the, the rules were very specific the targets were given in a certain order 430 yards 505 577 but i think was it this or was it number four that the order changed no mm -hmm. yeah i had the wrong print so the the closest target that we're supposed to start with was printed in the middle of the order and the rules were saying start closest to farthest so i kept worrying do I read the list in order or do I read the instructions? Eventually I settled on the instructions. Mm -hmm. So I think also another thing is during our, our um, practice time, I only yeah. only shot at the 100 yard target. I should have shot at the farther target to get a sense of the wind out there. Mm -hmm. So this was actually the first time that I was like testing out some of the wind holds. I think I missed my first, my first three shots just from like not holding enough wind. And another thing, we only had to be touching the Mm -hmm. uh, what you call it, the tank trap with the rifle. So we could have just gone prone and laid the rifle yeah, over the, it. The, the master director was saying you could you could actually lay down prone as long as your your rifle is touching the tank trap or part of it. That's allowed by the rules. So I'm all, I'm all balling that right leg over there, just so low to the ground. Mm -hmm. A little bit of gamesmanship, but uh, I think that would have been a good move. No tripods. Yeah, so we could have we could have used our bipods on the ground. We could have put part of the rifle over here and maybe even used the shooting bag. And this one's saying no chairs. So does that mean the other ones we could have had chairs? I guess so. No ice chests. James would have brought an ice chest. I have that feeling. <laughs> yeah. So I shoot right after Chris in the order, and he had this clear wind moment, and then all of a sudden. <sighs> It's okay. I probably would have missed him anyway. You know, went out with my bipod extended. This one we probably should have done the best on. Yes, sir. All you had to do was run up, and there's a green X behind where the spotter scope is now. Mm -hmm. And you just had to be able to touch it. So we definitely could have gone prone on that hill. Let's go back to the look of this stage. So yeah, so on this one, there's like a green X somewhere over here. It's uh, right back here. Actually, I'm not sure if we're, we're sharing the stage, but I mean, we'll just make a marker on the video. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm 1704. So, yeah, the green marker right there. We just had to be somewhere on it. We had to engage, what, three targets? Let's see what the distances were. Targets N, Y, and Z. M was 505 yards, Y was 467, and Z was 642. Um, I'm thinking I had tried to go on the side of the hill, so like my my elbow was touching it. I wish I had just laid down on top of it, mm -hmm. like the 
the crest of the hill would have been perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't even, I don't remember what, this is like the second stage of the day for me, for both of us. And, um, I think I just need to get better at manipulating my bipod. Um, I was, I had them set at different heights, but I noticed that like I had the high, the one of the legs, the shorter one, not set long enough. So like I was only on one bipod leg and I, I didn't even check to see if my rifle was candid. So that might've messed up some of my, my, uh, my dope, but, uh, all in all, I think it was a really fun match, a great experience, mm -hmm. a great learning experience, like a crash course into, into precision rifle competition. And, um, uh, over the course of the day, I think both of us improved a lot and we both finished up pretty strong. And we both now know that there's a lot more that we have to practice, mm -hmm. but we're definitely going to do it again. Yeah, definitely going to shoot another match. All right, well, thanks you guys for watching and uh, hey, maybe we'll see you at the next PRS match. Yep. Take it easy. Take care.